I've just been let down on an urgent job. It's just gone 8 a.m. on a Sunday. There's a kitchen getting fitted at this customer's house tomorrow and I've got to plaster it today. It's gotta be done. And now it looks like I've gotta go by myself and do it. We'll go there now, we'll prep it. And um, there's some chases to throw some bonding. So we'll do that straight away. And then whilst that's setting, we'll go and get some lunch and we'll come back and skim it. So Kieran's had a family emergency and I've had to bring in a mystery helper. But I'll tell you more about that shortly. What we're going to do is skim this sealer, fill that hole, and do these patches on this wall. This section is getting skimmed, and this sealer is getting skimmed. Everything else isn't. So it's all okay. It's all going to get covered by units. So the priority is because it takes the longest to go off, is to fill these chases in as fast as possible and get them set in. It's already all been sealed with SBR. The customer done it for me, but there's a few little bits where he hasn't gone down the socket heat enough and down to the worktops enough. So I'm going to SBR those little bits as well. So I really wanted to film this job because I wanted to show you on jobs like this how if you work really efficiently you can make loads of money. The big setback for me now though is Kieran's let me down, he's not been able to make it in so I've now got double the amount of work to do. He's like my right hand man, he knows what I need and when I need it and without him the job is just a lot more difficult. Now the thing is, I needed a helper, there was no way around it, I needed someone to film me at least, no matter which way, so I managed to get a little help in hand, but the thing is, this helper is very, very camera shy, so I'll tell you what, you watch the video carefully and see if you can figure out who it is. In the meantime, all I'm focusing on is just getting these chases filled as fast as possible. These have got to set, they've got to be firm at least before we can skim over them. Now the customer's SBR'd inside the chases, so that isn't helping us because there's no suction now. So the priority is get these filled fast, then we're going to look at getting that ceiling boarded up, and then we'll look at getting the skimming on. Okay, that's it. That's all the chases filled out. We've fixed far too much bonding, but we're going to let this set now, and then we'll start the skimming. Okay, so now I'm going to fix this little hole here. Now, the electrician or the plumber is going to slightly back past this joist here. So instead of taking it to the next joist, the long, to join half on, I'll show you a little trick how to get around this. We're going, to, we're going to make this piece of plastic board slightly bigger than this because trying to cut a board to fit in there perfect is near almost impossible because if you never cut them out perfectly square. So I'll show you how we get around that as well. I'm going to cut the board slightly bigger. Okay, so that's going to fit in there like that. I made this board bigger than what the hole is. So now all I need to do is mark around the outside of the hole, outside of the board, sorry, and I'm going to make a new hole. So it's basically like making a jigsaw puzzle with your own pieces. Okay, so I'm still waiting for the bonding to set. That's going to take a little while. There's still cracks in the ceiling that I need to deal with, and I still need to get set up for skimming. And I'd like to have some dinner before we get started as well, so I'm trying to work as efficiently as I possibly can. Right, I'm just putting a few screws in the ceiling as well, where we've, where we've cut out, just to make sure if we've cut a section that was nailed up and there's not a nail for a little space, we're just making sure the board is nice and tight to the ceiling. We don't want any movement whatsoever when we're trying to blend in. Well, this little problem here now, because this is we've made the made the opening fit the boards, and the boards are fitting there lovely. Now the thing is now we're not half on a joist anymore. Now what we can do is we can use a little strip of timber just to catch the flapping end. It's still screwed to this joist. It's still screwed to this joist. So just to stop that little bit of flapping in the middle, we can put a little strip of timber. Now what I like to use is this. It's what they do with the uh, suspended metal ceilings with. The reason I like using this is one, because it's light, and two, you can stack loads come together in your van. So I've got a big pile of these like this. I've got enough to probably do a million of these holes in my van, and it only takes up that much space, you know, on me, underneath where my angle beads sit. And you only need tin slips to cut it. Drywall screws go straight into this, like no problem. Now you might be thinking, why doesn't he just cut it to the next joist? From experience, I know the less of the ceiling you cut into, the better. There's all sorts up there. There's pipes, there's cables, and you're going in blind. So the minimum amount to be cut out, 
is obviously going to be the safest. Another little tip for you, these drywall screws, drywall screws, yeah, get the silver ones, like that. If you get the, the black ones, I think the phosphorus, I don't know how you say it, but anyway, you get metal splinters off the black ones, get the silver ones, you don't get any metal splinters. Let's do a first try and see if this fits in the hole. Oh, we're there, before we do that. Got a nail sticking on. That's how slips. I haven't brought my hammer in. So we've got a little. There we go. little screws in that bit where it's flapping. There we go. Nice and solid. Now we have got a little section here that, oh, I'm not keen on. Oh, look at that. That's a bit of a damage bit. Okay, I'll show you how to fix that as well. Take the third paper off. So that's it. These videos, they're not staged or set up. You get to see firsthand real life situations that develop on site. This is how it really works on site. And these are the ways that I managed to get around these different obstacles. <laughs> it's like cheating, but it works fantastic. Now we're not too worried about these worktops at all. Tomorrow morning, first thing, these are getting ripped clean out. But Stephen still, I'm gonna keep the job nice and tidy-ish in the meantime. I'm gonna cut in nice and neat round these switches as well. Like I said, the customer did SPR the whole job for me, but he didn't do a very good job of cutting in. Fortunately, though, you can see exactly where it has been SPR'd and where it isn't, just by how much the surface is shiny. I'm just going to blend in there as well. So I'll just be that getting skimmed. Now, what an important little bit to get is, see this? This wall's SPR'd, the ceiling's SPR'd, but I've got to put some scrim on that edge up there to stop that cracking. So I have to turn the scrim down the wall, so I have to do a little bit of blending in on top of that wall. So that needs SPR in as well. Hello. Now the ceiling's good and solid. There's no movement in it whatsoever, but there is a few little cracks that have appeared over time, so I'm just going to scrim all those up, scrim this new patch in. Again, trying to work as efficiently as possible because we're on a time scale here. I want to get this done. Bonding's still wet. Mixed far too much bonding. Kieran would have been getting shouted at for this, but shh, we won't tell him. <laughs> Clean the whistle up a little bit. Took all the big chunks off. I mean, really, it needs a good scraping. But we haven't really got time. Kieran doesn't realise the severity of what would have happened to him if he worked for my dad and left a whisk like that. <laughs> Times are different now that you can't you can't beat the apprentice up, can you? Okay, we are all sealed, all filled, hole filled, scrimmed up, water set up, more water ready. We've got to wait for the, the main bit of bonding we're waiting to off for is this thick bit here that is still quite soft. So now we're going to go get some lunch. Aren't we, Maisie? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll come back and skim all this um, ceiling and wall in one shot. Do you recognise them plates? Do you recognise that face? <laughs> she gets brought to all the fancy places for dinner. Things that we're going to do to make this job go faster. We're going to use one of these to save me having to get up and down every five minutes. We're going to put some of this in. You can see little dark patches starting to form on the bonding now. 
as soon as that starts going dark you can skim over it doesn't need sealing if you leave it to the next day you've got to seal it but as soon as it starts to set if you skim it whilst it's still full of moisture it's, it, that's how it's designed to be skimmed over so you can just get straight over that now uh, right let's get mixing first mix look at these and in fancy little new packets as well now little new sachets on so if you're a beginner don't even think about it but Right, let's get this show on the road. As soon as that powder goes in the water, you know that's it now. You stay until the job's finished. And it begins. freshly plastered wall for him to tie on to rather than trying to get over you know like this is it, I don't worry we'll get the tie on there's holes and stuff he, he, he'll like this much better I can't see it I just spotted another little potential crack so if you spot them when you're skimming just take them up quick this little uh, bit of board done now as well. And we're going to blend that little bit of screen in so that's no longer noticeable. So I'm just working away as I'm doing the scene, I'm doing the wall at the same time just to save on to come back. A little bit of. I'll blend that in nice. That part. Now don't forget, in the back of my mind I'm thinking I've got accelerator in this plaster, I'm mixing for myself, I've still got to wash out yet, I've got to get the ceiling on and the wall on and try and talk to you guys <laughs> and film the whole process, so <laughs> I call it the swan effect, you know nice and calm on the outside but really underneath I'm padding like flipping crazy, well when I say crazy maybe not that crazy, I mean after 20 plus years of doing this you sort of get a feel for it so you know nothing really panics me that much anymore these days it's just one of those you sort of you know your limitations so you don't go past them now look showing this okay. i dropped a bit 
dropped a little bit. Shh, don't tell them. So it doesn't drop any. More. It is something. Like with it being Sunday, if I'm not in the pub by 3 o'clock, there's a good chance the bar staff will phone the police to check on me. <laughs> Don't worry, it seems like it does more fit in the bucket. Once you mix the power and the water together, it does shrink a bit. So it's see, look, you think, you think that's never gonna fit in. Right. Like, look at it piled up. Watch, it's like magic. Now let me tell you a little fault that I found of this Dewalt cordless mixer. It's fantastic. I can mix K-Rend with it, I mix sand and cement with it. It's an all-round fantastic bit of kit. The problem is, look how I've got to keep my finger on the trigger. You've got to keep your hand on that trigger all the time. So it's no good when you want to start scraping around the bucket whilst you mix it at the same time. As the first coat's on, um, again, there's an accelerator in this, so we haven't got too much time for chitter chat, but that's the first coat on. Now I'm going to quickly throw the second coat on, and we shouldn't be long, then we'll be out of here quite soon. Straight. I've just sent Maisie to go and get what I call the sun out of the van. That thing there, show them that Maisie. That. I don't know what they put in it, but it's powerful. As soon as you turn that on, like it just lights the whole room. So, for those of you who don't know, Maisie's my 14 year old daughter. And at home we call her the princess because she likes to do absolutely nothing and get spoiled. But it's times like this I really do enjoy. You know, it's not very often I get to spend a full day with her. She's always out busy doing things with her friends and what have you. So to be able to get her in for a day, to spend a day with her dad, is just fantastic. And the good thing is, with those 54 volt batteries out of the DeWalt whisk, uh, one of those that can be on the brightest setting and it'll stay on for about seven hours so no need to keep changing batteries in this stuff's starting to turn that the, uh, the plaster with the accelerator with it is starting to set. It's going really firm to use. That's okay because the next little trick up my sleeve is I'm going to use the speed skin just to flatten this first coat in. It just gives me a, a real quick head start of getting over everything neat fast. Okay, so I'll tell you the predicament that you, you end up with yourself or the, the, the challenge that you've got. This stuff's setting, it's really going quite firm. So I know it's not going to be long before it just literally starts going too hard to work with, which is fine. I can keep on top of this. It's the same gear that's on the ceiling. So that's setting, this is setting. I've got to get this on and I've got to get over it quite quick. I've got to flatten it in before it does start to set too much. But also, I've got my bucket that's still cankered in the stuff and my whisk. So you've got to decide, have you got time to wash that out fast? Or do you need to get over your ceiling first and sort of struggle washing the bucket out later? I mean, we have got Maisie on hand, but just, just show me your fingernails, Maisie. Put your fingernails in front of the camera. Do, do you think she's going to be scrubbing buckets? <laughs> okay, so. I've assessed the line bit with the best thing to do. The stuff in the bucket and the stuff in the whisk, it's not going to rock hard yet. The ceiling is the priority and the wall over these things. So, 
and quickly kind of flatten them in. Quickly. And that's the beauty of having this, because it is fast. So I'll get this done quick and then I'll wash out. Now this doesn't get perfect, but it does give you a very good helping hand. Now I don't really like using flexible tools, but this is great just for giving it the first flattening. And then I'll go the rest of the way with me steel trowel. I always like to go two ways with this. Now again, up and down the room first, and then across. It's cleaned off quick. Let's get the bucket washed out and let's get that wall. Put it over that wall. Well, people always ask me, what do I do with my dirty water? Have a guess. Put your answer in the comments. You might win 10 internet points if you get it right. There you go. That's it. Oh, another little tip for you. When you're washing your bucket out, put your water in your mixing bucket. Fill the mixing bucket full of water. Like this, one side here. So it's got water in there. Wash all around the top of it. And then the bottom, when you wash the whisk off, it washes the bottom of the bucket. That will have washed the bottom of the bucket out as well. Just clean the bottom of the whisker. And just sip it in your dirty water bucket. We just use that bucket for getting rid of slops. See, that's that cleaned out. And then we'll deal with that later. This blend will never be seen, it'll always be behind the kitchen cupboards, but. The OCD in me still makes me want to blend it in perfectly. You'll notice with me, I don't use a corner trowel either. I go neat into the angles. I don't load that. I take the gear off first and then go neat into the angle and pull it out. And then I'll cut the angle nice and sharp and square with the turn trowel towards the end of the mix. Now I'm going to go around the ceiling with the first wet trowel with the steel. That's it, it's already been flattened with the screen skin. So now I'm going to give it the steel. Come in close. Yeah, that's really kind of not film, yeah. I'm sure on this. Look at all these um can you see all these bubbles? Yeah. Sometimes you get these. Say hi, Maisie. <laughs> Sometimes you get these little bubbles, um, and it's just the first coat reacting. It doesn't really, doesn't do anything. It's, it's, sorry, not the first coat. It's just the plaster reacting at the, at the beginning. It's not going to fall off. It doesn't matter. Just as you travel up, they'll start to go. So don't spend too much time trying to get rid of them now. By the end of it, by the end of the gauge, they'll be gone. So look at this angle, this is where the speed skin doesn't get in. So a lot of fellas want to run a corner trial down that. And just give it a little wipe out. Take the stuff off your trial before you go in, so your trial's clean. Go right neat into the corner and pull it out. And that way then you don't have to bother with a, with a corner trial at all. Just takes a little bit of practice going neat, that's all. But once you get used to going into your angles neat, it'll just save you loads and loads of time. Now, that corner will just get neater and neater towards the end of the mix. So 
it now. This is the second wet trial. We do this, go around, clear the angles up and give it a quick polish and that's it, we'll be finished. That's it, all polished. Now I'm going to show you how to try how to clean up all these edges and get all these nice and, and tidy because you can't leave them like that, that's a mess. Some fans go along and just start brushing that. I think that that'll be good enough, but I'll, sh I'll show you a different way of doing it. Okay, so I'm going to cut in with the trowel. I watch the heel doesn't dig in. Cut along the edge with the toe of the trowel, like this, cut into the... Yeah. And then you come along to the front of the trowel. Show them around the room, boys. Oh. For our fellow electrician friends that follow behind us, there's nothing worse than them having to come along and try and chop it out with a chisel. So, just putting these boxes out. You can get electrocuted while you're doing it. Ah. It's good feeling it, it wakes you up a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> so that extra little bit of commentary, that was my customer. And he just so happens to be an electrician, so he knows what he's talking about as well. That's it. All done. All cleaned down. Hey? Yeah, why are you? And that was his missus asking me if I'd done a before picture she thought I was taking an after picture, not realising that we're still filming. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed that video. If there's anything specific that you'd like me to make a video on, then please let me know in the comments. In the meantime, make sure you hit the subscribe button because otherwise you'll probably never see me ever again.